Hello everyone, I'm Würfel and today I want to show you how I cast my dice and for that we want to start right now to run you through the complete process of all the things you need for this. So here you can already see some of my molds and we will use a pressure pot for this. So that's this guy over here and we will also use a vacuum chamber. Um, to save up some space, I use my pressure pot also as a vacuum chamber. So I got this self-made lid over here. I made myself a, uh, a little bit of a ceiling here. So I can put that right on top here. And it will work as a vacuum chamber as well. And I think one of the most important parts will be this bucket over here. It's two buckets to be precise. It's, uh, let me see, I think this one, yeah, uh, it was filled with waffles. So um, I used these, I trimmed off uh, the, the top part here a little bit and this one is cut in half. I used some screws from the outside so I have three points on the inside to rest the second level. So. What does this all bring me? So you can see here on this part there are quite some uh, ugly messy uh, resin spots over here and I'm sure underneath it there are some more. This is um, absolutely normal that uh, when you cast stuff you will have some stuff spilling out. You will tilt over a mold and uh, you will overfill it or maybe you will uh, just sprinkle a little bit around so make sure you have something to protect your uh, your expensive stuff so my pressure pot as you can see except of some dusty bits down here it's completely clean so this will serve me a long time also this buckle is very helpful when you want to transport everything so later we will see to stack all the molds inside of this. I managed to make my system working at these heights so everything is optimum uh, in, in the spacing here. And uh, so I have two levels of molds that I can put in. It's also pretty handy to move the whole bucket inside and everything's ready to go. So now to the part of the vacuum chamber and the pressure pot. The vacuum chamber will suck out the air of this bucket and thereby reducing the pressure. If you have any kind of bubbles in your resin or your silicon, you can use this vacuum to expand these uh, bubbles and they will rise to the surface and will pop. Um, I got a video about degassing uh, in a playlist uh, down below. So you can check that how that looks because in my casting I will not do any degassing. I will use the vacuum to fill my molds. So this is the part where we take a closer look at my molds. Ignore the shell for the first moment. We take a look at this part here. That's the filling spot. So down here is my die. And on top I got a filling funnel. And I try to get it for you here. You can see it's a very, very tiny hole. And when I pour my resin in here, it will not flow into my mold on its own. What I do is put the whole thing filled up and ready to go in my pressure pot. Put the vacuum chamber lid on top. And then I suck out the air that is trapped here inside my die. Then when I release the pressure from the outside by opening this valve here, the pressure from the outside will push my resin from the filling funnel into my mold. I repeat this a few times until no bubbles came out of this. And then my mold is completely filled. Also, when I mix my resin, I have bubbles in it. When I pour it in here, it will stay for a little while here and all the bubbles will raise to the top. 
they will not directly pop but they will be risen to the top and when I fill my molds all the parts that are not bubbly will flow into my mold. The rest of the bubbles that are inside will be catched by the pressure pot. So I remove the vacuum chamber lid, put on the pressure pot lid and then I do the opposite. I put a lot of pressure inside this and the effect that is then occurring is that with a higher pressure a liquid is able to take all the gases around it into solution and that's why fish can breathe or why you have some soda in your soft drinks um, you need pressure to put it in our atmospheric pressure is enough to put enough uh, oxygen and other gases into water so your fish uh, the fish can breathe and uh, if you take more pressure it can take more gases and cause all the little tiny bubbles are inside our resin the pressure will force these gases to come into solution into the resin then we need to keep all the pressure the whole time the stuff is curing so when our resin is cured it's solid and the gases won't pop up so when you remove the pressure too early your cast will go popping like uh, you have a shaken cola bottle or so um, so you definitely need to make sure you keep the pressure as long as it's time till you can demold your stuff. Now it's time for some preparations on these molds. I want to talk a little bit about these molds. Um, as I started mold making I used uh, all kinds of cups you can see here. This is cast in a regular disposable cup. Um, these are some other cups that I use and that's good to go but I decided I want something proper for an easy mold replication. Um, working with this kind of mold always needs to uh, make the clay cone as you saw in the cut mold tutorial or in the squish mold you need to model it. You, it, it takes a lot of time and this system here is uh, built to do this all for you. So in this I can hang in a funnel piece. At this, uh, at this funnel piece I have the die attached and then I can pour in my silicon right away. I got one prepped over here that will go in the next mold casting. You can see here I taped it up so nothing flows out. This over here is the funnel piece and down below I got the die sticking with a little uh, metal pin and when I'm done I can remove this funnel piece from the top here and then I start to cut open the mold and release the die. So it's technically pretty the same to go here and the, the big benefit besides having a very fast setup to make new molds is also that this shell here will hold my molds together. So I can put it back in uh, you can see here are some registration keys and I close this and you can see I can put a lot of pressure on this without squeezing the whole mold. So I just need to add some rubber bands to hold it together and I can cast and everything is fine. And the same is for the removing. I can just easily open it and release my dice and everything is fine and it's ready to go for the next cast. Um, with my older molds, especially the cut molds uh, like this one here, you can see when you put it back together in this really bad way here, there's a little bit of a misalignment and you don't want to have that. And the problem is um, the more the, the longer the cut is, the more difficult it may become to get the pieces stick together perfectly. Um, you try to do wibbly cuts to have some keying that the, these pieces will come together uh, and align much better. But then you need to add some rubber bands and I always try to use as less as possible. Only that much, uh, that many that you need to hold this together. Because if you have too much force you squeeze your mold together and uh, yeah that will deform your part and will not deliver some good dice. So 
I wanted something that is working without the risk of uh, deforming the model. Okay, and now we need to prep these molds for a casting. We want to cast epoxy today. So by epoxy, I like to use silicon spray to prep my molds. So we will give all these molds a little bit of spray. I open it. Just a little bit, just a few sprays. And then I like to use my fingers to wrap the complete mold to make sure I don't have any spots full of uh, oil and uh, also have all, this, all the surface touched by the oil. And after that, I make sure I aligned it as good as possible and put it back into its shell. And we need a lot of rubber bands to hold it together. And now I need to do this uh, 12 times again. And after that, I like to at least give it 20 minutes, 30 minutes to dry off. I don't want to have any of the um, solvents that are in the spray to interact with my casting later. This might cause some sticky dyes. Uh, it's also a little bit ugly at the uh, surface finish. So you have some shiny spots that look like it's wet and you have some dry, uh, uh, some smoother spots. So um, I like to leave it for a moment and get it dried out. So the molds are ready to use. I prep them all. I let them sit for around 30 minutes now. So there should be no uh, solvent on the surfaces now. I put all the rest of the molds over here in the pressure pot. I will show you that in a moment. Now it's time to weigh in our material. I got my epoxy over there, got my mixing cup, got my mixing stick. Uh, a little tip at the side, if you use a small scale and you're able to put it in a bag, any kind of bag um, is good for this. If you spill material on your scale, it's not the best for your scale. So make sure you can protect it in any way, so you won't have any, any problems with that in the future. So let's tear this out and weigh in our material. This is the first part and we have plenty of working time with that but I like to put in my uh, additives first so in this case I try to make some Smoke Borealis dyes and for that we need some black pigment. And we will add that in small amounts, stir it in and see how it looks and then decide to use some more or some less. So when I think that's pretty dark and good. Now to the Borealish glitter stuff. It's back on. Um, now I will measure in the hardener and we'll check the material for its color. I think this should be good to go. If not, I have uh, 
enough of material to do another try. So, I start with uh, the stuff over here, which we'll show it you in a, in a moment how it works. Okay, all the molds are filled, you can see them down here, and also these ones.